This spaghetti like jumble of lines is one of the largest public transit networks in the world, and it belongs to the city of Paris. Every day, 9.4 million trips are taken on these lines and the surrounding region. What's astonishing is how one of the world's oldest metropolises can build such a well connected network while retaining a high frequency of service. And this is just the beginning because it's about to grow massively. I'm saving what that expansion entails for later in the video because we need to truly grasp what it looks like today first. As there are, and stay with me here, 16 metro lines, 5 regional express network lines, 8 regional train lines and 12 tram lines. Not to mention a whopping 1500 bus lines throughout the region, including 64 within Paris itself and 46 night buses. This impressive network serves the 12.4 million inhabitants of the Ile de France region, including over 2 million people living in the city of Paris itself. But this impressive network wasn't built overnight. Paris has been added for over a century. While London may have beat Paris to the Underground Railway game by nearly 40 years, the city quickly caught up. See, Line 1 of the Paris Metro was opened in 1900, and by 1913 there were already 10 lines, thanks to a simple construction technique called cut and cover. The first line was built in just over two years, but some parts of the city were tougher to dig in, so the city resorted to building above ground. Four stations of Line 2 and 13 stations of Line 6 were therefore built on elevated platforms. As new lines expanded across the city, construction had to deal with new obstacles like crossing beneath the Seine River, and another unexpected obstacle hiding beneath a huge part of the city. But before I tell you what that is, I'll give you a hint. The stone facades on Paris's iconic buildings. Now I'll give you some time to try and figure it out on your own, so this is a perfect time to thank the sponsor of this video, Surfshark. Surfshark is a VPN, and if you don't know what a VPN is by now, well, it's frankly pretty amazing, as a VPN lets you virtually travel the world with the tap of a finger. For example, if you live in Denmark like me, you can connect to a Canadian server and access the biggest movie catalogue on Netflix. Even better is the fact that websites normally show you prices based on your location and device. So by turning on your Surfshark VPN, you get the best deals when shopping online or buying your next plane tickets. But I must say, this very small feature is my favorite. It removes all cookie consent pop-ups from the website you visit. It's available on Chrome and Firefox, and it's amazing. And anyone can try out what Surfshark has to offer, and if it's not the perfect fit, no worries, they have a 30-day money-back guarantee. So try out Surfshark today by clicking my link in the description and try out their amazing features while staying safe browsing the internet. Thank you again to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Alright, so back to the stone facades on Paris's iconic buildings. See, much of the city's architecture, including Notre Dame, features Lutetian limestone, a stone which is local to the Paris region. It's been quarried there since Roman times, and in the 1500s they started quarrying underground. The problem was that as the city expanded, so did the quarries, and in 1774, a 300 meter section of the city collapsed into the ground. In response, King Louis XVI, the ruler of France at the time, established the Department of General Quarry Inspection to map the labyrinth of underground caves and ensure they were structurally sound by adding pillars and filling in cavities. Around the same time, heavy rains caused bodies to re-emerge from overcrowded cemeteries across the city. The serious public health problems this caused drove city officials to relocate the contents of several cemeteries underground. This became what is now known as the Catacombs, a popular, if morbid, tourist attraction. It's the world's largest ossuary and contains an estimated 6 million remains. Beyond just the Catacombs, abandoned tunnels still exist on a huge part of the city, with 20% of Parisian buildings on top of a former quarry. What's interesting is that the general quarry inspection still exists, and they continue to survey 280 kilometers of underground galleries, adding structural support where necessary and updating the maps. Since 1955, this part of the underground quarries is strictly forbidden to the public. Naturally, the forbidden nature of these tunnels has attracted urban explorers and even the occasional rave party. But in reality, what you'll find in the tunnels is much less exciting. A labyrinth of cold, damp and completely dark tunnels, sometimes flooded with muddy water. In 1793, a man named Philibert Aspart got lost in the tunnels and died. His body wasn't found for 11 years. But even today, the tunnels can be dangerous. 
In 2017, a couple of teenagers were lost for three days until they were finally found by a team of rescuers and promptly hospitalized for hypothermia. As fun as it might seem, with many barricaded exits and up to a 3,700 euro fine, it's probably a better idea to stick to the one and a half kilometers of catacombs open to the public. But anyway, when you consider the catacombs, the existing metro, sewers, water and gas lines and whatever else is hiding in the ground underneath Paris, adding more lines to the metro network gets more and more complicated. In the 1990s, the Meteor project used tunnel boring machines to dig 20 meters under Paris deeper than the actual water table. In 1998, this project became Line 14, the first fully automated metro line. It's now the fastest line in the network, with an average speed of 40 km an hour, carrying 35,000 passengers every hour. But even as the city expanded its metro network, the older lines weren't forgotten. In 2012, the oldest in the network, Line 1, was renovated, becoming completely automated. And while we're certainly not the first YouTube channel to talk about the Paris metro, I think we have a unique perspective thanks to my writer Charles, who happens to live there. What other videos may not mention is that experiencing the metro as a tourist is a completely different experience from riding it on a regular basis. Beyond dealing with the daily grind of packed rush hour trains, the quality of your experience depends on which lines you take. Take line 11 for example, which is still running trains from 1959. While these trains add to the Parisian charm for the tourists, they're a real pain to deal with on a daily basis for the locals. These old trains are shaky and unreliable, and to get the door open you have to forcefully pull a nasty metal knob touched by thousands of other people. Thankfully, line 11 is being expanded, so it's due to get new trains in the near future. And while it might seem a bit entitled to complain about all the trains, the Paris metro system has its fair share of real problems. On January 1st, 2023, the cost of the monthly Navigo pass will increase by 12% to 84 euros euros and 10 cents, which in the current economic context is hard to stomach for many Parisians. Even worse, only four lines are now running at full capacity due to budget cuts, meaning fewer trains and more delays. Having to wait a few minutes for the next train might not sound that bad, but when train after train is packed due to delays, it can be exhausting. See, in 2021, impressively, every metro line was in time more than 90% of the time during rush hour. But by September 2022, this dipped below 90% for several lines, reaching as low as 84%. Technical problems and hazards on the tracks were among the causes for these delays, but one reason sticks out more than the others lack of personnel. Out of 3,100 jobs available, there is a lack of 100 drivers. The not so shocking truth is that fewer and fewer people want to spend their day or sometimes nights working underground for little pay. Strikes by metro workers brought the metro to a halt on November 10th, leaving only the fully automated lines 1 and 14 in operation. This, understandably, created a lot of chaos. And since workers weren't satisfied with the pay increase for 2022, more strikes are expected in January of 2023. But while there isn't enough money to increase employee pay, somehow there's plenty of money for new construction. Line 14 was recently expanded 5.8 kilometers with four new stations and 35 brand new trains. By 2024, another 14 kilometers will be added, connecting the city to the Aldi airport. But what's impressive is what this will connect to. Over the next six years, four new metro lines will open outside of the city, adding 68 stations to the network. The project is called the Grand Paris Express and will add 200 kilometers of fully automated lines, doubling the size of the metro network. 75% of the new lines will be underground and trains will run at an average of 60 km an hour, nearly twice the current average. This will add badly needed connections between suburbs, giving new transit options that don't require a trip through the city center. Now, parts of the Grand Paris Express were supposed to open in time to shuttle visitors to venues for the 2024 Olympics. But after the pandemic and other construction delays, the earliest opening dates for the project have been pushed to 2025. While this is certainly a bit embarrassing for the city, the the total cost of 35.6 billion euros, or about 178 million per kilometer, isn't too bad. At least when you compare it to the ridiculous cost of New York's Second Avenue subway, which is the most expensive in the world. While that's admittedly an extreme example, I think it highlights how France can complete massive public transit infrastructure projects for a reasonable amount of time and money, while the US is completely incapable. While that's perhaps a subject for a different video, Paris's transit system does share one downside with New York. It's pretty dated. 
Having a metro system first built over a century ago means that accessibility is difficult, if not impossible, for people who can't take the stairs. That means the Paris transit map looks a lot different if you're in a wheelchair, where most of the stations in the city centre are inaccessible. But beyond the downsides, what's insane is that we've only looked at the metro network. Even after the 2030 extension of the metro to 400 plus kilometers of lines, the RER, or Regional Express Network, will still be much longer. The five lines of regional express trains cover over 600 kilometers of tracks at 249 stations. Since the RERA was created in the 1970s, the network has expanded to five lines. Today, the RERA and B, now the first and second most used rail lines in Europe, compared to the eight regional trains, the RERs run more frequently and pass through the city instead of ending in Paris. And three of these lines converge in one station in the city centre, Châtelet Les All. Opened in December 1977, the station has become a confusing hellhole for both tourists and Parisians alike. And if you're wondering why, well, it's really two metro stations combined with an RER station, making it literally the longest largest underground train station in the world. They have divided the station into three sectors, as if that makes it easier to change trains or find one of the 19 exits. Uh, anyway. Since three RER lines and five metro lines pass through it, you'll inevitably have to use the station if you're trying to get somewhere in Paris. But your experience on the RER trains themselves really depends on which line you take. Line B is definitely the worst, with only 86.8% .8 of trains running on time during rush hour in 2021. The local transport authority is investing in repairs to make the lines more reliable, but all of this is outshined by their next big project, expanding line E to the east. This project will add an additional 55 kilometers of track and bring 620,000 new riders to the network. But aside from trains, trams, buses and metros, Paris still has other ways to get around. See, the city has over a thousand kilometers of bike lanes, including 352 kilometers added during the lockdown. So sure, there is a pretty insane mess hiding underneath Paris, but its public transit is something most cities would envy. And I don't think I'm alone in saying that their structure is a bit strange but it definitely works. But let me know what you think. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.